three, two, one. It's hey, what's up, you guys? Shardimus Prime here, doing another McFarlane Toys action figure review on AMC's The Walking Dead Morgan with Impaled Walker. If you're trying to pick these up, you can get big, 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 big. Get your big badass toys at BigBadToyStore.com. Click the link in the description below. And big thanks to Mr. Phils for helping me find these figures. These guys are from Series 8. There's a different version of Morgan that comes single carded where he does not have the blood all over the place and he has an interchangeable head. And you can see Morgan right over there on the back and wrapping around and on the back and see the other figures from the wave none of which are walkers so it's kind of a trip that this is the only walker that we get from the set then you can see the 10 inch Michonne right over there which I'll be reviewing later on then you can see the two figures right over there and then not much on the bottom or not much more at the top all right let's get to it and crack these things open so here's Morgan and the impaled walker out of the packaging and this is a very cool two-pack set I do have some gripes about it but for the most part I think this is pretty awesome I really like this walker over here the impaled walker Walker just looks really cool. I love seeing just the gross female zombie. It just really looks cool. I like this little spool right here and then you get all these spikes sticking out of it. So looking at Morgan's head sculpt, I think this looks pretty good. It looks like a very sad Morgan. It looks like Lenny James. I think they captured the likeness. I like how the paint came out on this. Very clean paint. The eyes look really good. I like the facial expression. You know, he's very, very sad. And looking at the hair right there, I think it's sculpted pretty nicely. You can see some uh, like a lighter brown right in there. And then looking at the top of the head, looks really nice. I like the hood right there. Then he has his backpack amongst a couple of other accessories, which we'll go over, but I like the color variation that we're getting on the backpack. The thing with this backpack is that it's really tricky getting this on without these pieces unplugging right over here. I'll go over that more in a second. But looking at the blood spatter on here, this looks really, really nice. Looking right there on the jacket, that is awesome. I'm really digging that. You can even see some zippers sculpted right there, so that looks really good. Same thing right there. I'm really digging the blood spatter on this. This is awesome. Looking right there, and the pants and knee pads. Nice sculpted work, nice details. The boots look really good. Make sure to get the blood on the boots. Looking cool. Some treads right there. Not going all the way through. It's a little bit weird. Maybe that's to help it stand a little bit better. And looking on the back of the figure right here, you get some nice wash paint going in and out. And I could remove the backpack so you could see how the back of the figure looks. And, you know, still some color variation, but not all kinds of crazy blood or anything like on the front of the figure. So, yeah, he comes with two weapons. Uh, he comes with this automatic right here, which looks really good. Ooh, the little paint just came off. But, yeah, that looks really nice. I like that. Get some silver dry brushing along with the red. Looking really good. Then he gets his infamous bow staff right there. Yeah, looks like it's made out of wood. It has blood all over it. So that the way this backpack works is I think I, you're supposed to just like plug in one end of it. So it plugs in right there and it'll plug in the same way on the other side right here. So I think wrapping it around and then just immediately you can see, you know, especially while I'm trying to do this on camera. So it can be done where you can get this all tabbed in here, but it's just really finicky and it's difficult and it takes patience and I'm definitely not going to keep trying to do it while on camera. But just to demonstrate how it looks without plugging those in, it still looks pretty good. So you can still display them without it totally plugged in, but looking on the side right there, it does look a little janky. And he does hold his weapons pretty well. You can get him holding the bow staff, you know, you can get him holding this gun right over here. So. They all fit into his hands. He doesn't really have any trigger fingers or anything like that sticking out. So, I don't know, but these still work out pretty well. Come on, get in there. So, yeah, you can see that. Pew, pew, bang, bang. So, I'm not a big fan of the articulation on this figure. I think they could have given him more ankle movement over here. He's kind of tricky to stand. Uh, you can get his head looking up only that much, so it doesn't really move up too far. It can look down pretty far, though. You get side-to-side -side movement over here, and then you do get a nice neck pivot. His shoulders move outward that much. You can rotate them forward. He does have an elbow bend. He rotates at the elbow. The wrist moves side to side and they hinge in and out or up and down depending on how you turn this He does have a waist swivel, but it just moves only a tiny tiny bit right there Just shifts side to side his hips move outward that much. He can only kick forward that much He has no upper thigh swivel, but he does have knee swivel and he does have knee bend right there So at about 90 degrees that looks like then his ankles don't really do anything at all You can turn them side to side just some and it feels like there's supposed to be ankle pivot in there but it just barely moves and it definitely does not move up and down <laughs> I love seeing new walkers, man. Uh, this is just a really cool looking zombie. I really like how the face is all torn up over here. I really like that greenish tone that we get to the gray color on her face. Her face is just torn up like crazy. Oh man, that is just awful. I'm really liking the hair too. Sculpted really nicely. Nice gash right there on her back. The blood looks very realistic. The clothes look really good. I like the blood right here on the arm. The hands look all chopped up and stuff. 
really really nice look I'm really digging this a lot nice blood right over there just love all the little details that McFarland Toys puts into the walkers just really digging it a lot liking this alright so looking right here you can see this is where she gets impaled so I'll show off all the spikes in a moment and then you can see some nice wrinkles and everything going right there into the dress. Ooh, yeah. Walker patas. Ooh, I like that. I like that. Not too bad. Oh, this one still has a shoe on. All right. And then looking on the back right here, you can see that she sharded down the dress. I don't know. Because I wonder all these walkers should have dookie stains, right? Because when you die, you know, you're supposed to poop right away. Poop and pee, you know? Die, poop. And uh, yeah, so all the walkers should have uh, streak stains, dookie stains. Now the articulation on this figure is very limited. Uh, you can get the head rotating side to side, but it's at an angle just the, due to the way the neck is sculpted here and everything. Uh, she can look up and down only a little bit, so you do get some head pivot here as well. And the shoulders move outward, so it looks kind of funny looking. And then they do rotate forward as well. And you can bend her arms at the elbow. Her elbow bends in very far on this one and not so far on this side because of all the wrinkles and stuff you can't turn the wrist side to side it's on a swivel right there and then she kind of has a little bit of a shifty pivot right here or swivel at the waist but not much more than that I feel like I'm gonna break it if I keep pushing it then you can rotate those feet just a little bit side to side and it looks like her knees bend inside there. It's really, really tricky to see. I really wish the plastic they used for the lower part of this dress was made out of much softer material because I want to bend these legs around and the scarring right there on the leg looks really good. I really like that green flesh tone too. But yeah, it looks like she has a working knee joint in there or a swivel at least and I wish I could use that articulation a little bit more so. We also get this empty spool over here which looks really good, very realistic. I took the spikes out right here because I'm going to demonstrate how you plug these in but the wood looks just so real over here. Even at the bottom of it, this looks really nice. Love the blood added right over there. This is very, very cool. I'm liking that. Then each of these spikes, you get seven spikes here. And I really like the detail put into the spike. And you can see the numbers going right over there, one through seven on each of the little rectangular parts. And I really like the details in each of these spikes too. They look really realistic. None of them look the same as the other, you know, so I think that's really awesome. So one thing I don't like about this whole figure set is that it's a bit tricky getting all these spikes plugged in. Uh, I get my one indicator right there on the spike, but there's no indication of where to start right here on the spool, and that's very frustrating. I thought I had seen a number before, but I'm not seeing one now. So this little piece has an L shape, and I'm looking for an L-shaped slot around here, and I have one right there, and this is not the one I want to plug it into because this has three little holes at the bottom right there. There's another L shape that has just two and I think it's uh, there's the two hole thingies and there's my L shape. Yeah, so this is where I'm gonna start and then from here I'm gonna go uh, counterclockwise. So then plug the spike in right there and then it feels like the bottom is supposed to go into one of these little holes like that. So that sits there. And then I'm gonna grab number two and go ahead and plug that in and it seems to fit pretty well in there. And then number three uh, this is the one that also kind of has an L shape to it, and get that plugged in. And sometimes they don't like plug in as much as I'd like them to. I don't know. Okay, and then here's number four. Uh, it looks like it's supposed to go this way. Yeah, it looks like it's supposed to just shoot out like that. Uh, number five. Yeah, I'll come on, number five. And then get a the little thing right there. And then here's number six, and this is the one that looks like it's supposed to go into the uh, the walker, yep, you can see that. And then lastly, number seven, and come on, let's get this, uh, yeah, okay, there that goes. So, not extremely difficult, but just a bit tricky, right? So, there's all the spikes in there, looking all right, you know, I think that looks pretty cool. It kind of falls apart on you as you start to move it around a lot, but other than that, I think it's pretty sweet. This one I'm a little uncomfortable with. Maybe it should have been like this. Yeah, that, that actually looks a little bit better to me. Yeah, I like that. So now that's looking pretty cool. I dig that. That's pretty nice. Then if you remember how Morgan had his booby trap set up, and then you have the walker coming around. Oh, can't move. Stuck forever. 
Yeah, so I don't know. I think it works pretty good. You're kind of bending this a little bit, but still, uh, it works out. Yep, she's getting stabbed. And to measure all three of these out, you can see Morgan standing a little over five inches tall. The walker is standing just a little under five inches, especially because she's hunched over like that. And then these spikes go up to just a little over five inches. And then for your size comparison, here's the two figures next to Michonne and the governor. And then here they are next to the Marvel Legends Big Time Letdown Spider Man. Hey, baby. You like taller guys? Huh? Hey, hey, no biting, no biting. Hey, what the hell? Thank you. Wow. So again, I think the paint apps and the sculpting on these just came out fantastic. Unfortunately, a lot of work needs to be done on the articulation for it to be easier for me to do any stop motion stuff. Morgan kept falling over while I was trying to do that stop motion bit and just getting his arms up enough so he's holding this gun right here is just really tricky. So other than that, I think they're really cool and I'm very happy to have them and I hope you guys liked my review. If you did, please hit the like button, click any of these boxes over here. If you want more shart in your face, if you're 18 years of age or older, check out my Patreon account. Follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram and go to toynewseye.com for a photo gallery of images from this review. I'll catch you guys later. Peace. Posing action figures, posing action figures, posing action figures every day. I'm posing action figures, I'm posing action figures, I'm posing action figures, it's okay. That's crispy. Someone had a gun up to your head and you had to either like kill a family member or have sex with a walker, what would you do?